Yes, yes, welcome to another video. I'm Lewis. Above me is John, and this is the preview for the second leg of the Borussia Dortmund game. An absolutely crucial match. Some say the biggest game of our season so far. Absolutely huge, guys, and we'll be doing a live watch along, so hopefully you can join us for that. Before we get into it, guys, let's set a like tag. Let's go for 1,000 likes, so make sure you smash that thumbs up button. If you do like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you know every time that we release a new video or go live. We're trying to get to 25,000 subscribers, so any help towards that be massively appreciated. Also, want to tell you guys that this uh, video has been sponsored by the guys at Manscaped. Now, Manscaped got some great products, guys, for you to make sure that you take care of your balls, including this, the Lawnmower 3.0, the third version in the in the, in the the Envid line, bro, of uh, ball trimming technology. Now, it's got a torch on it. It's Ooh. completely wireless, cordless, got a mint charge on it. I've not charged it since we st first started doing these sponsored videos. Um, and it's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower or the bath if you so desire. And they've also got this. I'm not showing this before. I'm going to show you this time. Ooh, show it's me, a, bro. It's show a me, bro. good what piece of technology, bro. It's the Weed Whacker. Whack this up Ooh. your nose, and you get rid of all your nose hairs, and it, you know, perfect. You'll be this, you'll be the smooth guy. You'll be a smooth operator. Now, if you go to manscaped.com and use code extra, you'll get yourself 20% off, and you'll also get free shipping. Manscaped.com, code extra, 20% off. And free shipping. What a deal that is that for is what is deal. the biggest game of our season so far. Now, we need to calm ourselves down, bro. As good as that sponsorship deal is for us and the people at home, we need to calm ourselves down. And the players need to keep calm tonight, right? They need to keep calm because this is a huge game. We just saw, right, in the last minutes of the PSG buying game, Leroy Sane got the ball. He needed to keep a cool head. He didn't, and he fluffed his lines. We need our players to stay calm. We need to understand that in this game, as soon as that game kicks off tonight, we are going through as it stands. We are winning this game. We do not need to win this game. We just don't need to lose. We can't lose the game. You know what I mean? So keep calm, bro, is what I'm saying. And I know I've spoke for two minutes, 22 seconds already, and you've not spoken once. And that's because I'm not calm, because I'm literally shitting myself. <laughs> but the, I'm not playing football. I'm not the one on the pitch. The players are. We're, we're allowed to be nervous, bro. We're allowed, as fans, we're allowed to be nervous. And players will get nervous. However, the second they walk out on that football fit pitch, they need to switch that off yep. and realise the situation that they're in. They cannot let the nerves get the better of them for a big game like this, although nerves are a massive part of, uh, of football, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And I think it, we need to keep calm as fans. The, the players need to keep calm. And as much as we're allowed to get nervous and that, our comment section in our videos has been a bit weird. There's a lot of you out here who are saying that we're already out. And I'm like, nah. what more do you want? We're, we're, we're winning. We're winning. We, we are, we're we are going through we're, as it stands. Avoid a loss and we are through. That is the simplest way to put it. Avoid a loss and we are into the next round. Yeah. So do you back us to go to Dortmund and not get beat? Yes, I back my team. But yes, I'm still shitting myself. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a massive, massive moment. If we can avoid conceding first, that's a massive part of this game. Yeah. If we score the first goal, I'll be very confident that, that we can stop them oh, from scoring 100%. two without response. So, don't concede first. Even if we do concede first, we can definitely get back in the get, get back in the game. We've got the players to do so. Um, but it is good. it's going to be massive. And the players just have to stay calm. You know, we've got some experienced players on the pitch now. You know, Kevin De Bruyne is, what, 29? Raheem Sterling's been around for a long time. You know, Mick Rad Mahrez is 29, 30 years old. We've got experienced players on the football pitch. And it's time that they just show a little bit of maturity. Not even just the experienced players, bro. It's, it's the players like... The big dogs like Ruben Diaz, who are influential in the team, mm. do you know what I mean? You don't have to be... Obviously, the experienced players will play a massive part, do you know what I mean, with the maturity and then kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. keeping everyone's levels down. But you've also got, like, Ruben Diaz, I imagine he's big in that dressing room and he would be a very, very big influence for this game. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Right, how do we set up for this? Do we play a striker or do we go false nine? Now... Don't think obviously Aguero is going to be playing this game. From my understanding, he's still injured and yeah. you know he's not going to be playing. So the question is, do you play um, Gabby Jesus or false nine, or is there a third option? Played played in the in the last game against Leeds. Um, a couple of people in the Discord server have been asking this, including Leng and Sweet. Um, do you play Ferran Torres? Now Ferran Torres hasn't featured that much this season. When he did have a long stint as playing as a striker. Did very well. Didn't really miss any chances. Got one chance against Leeds. Scored. Is there a potential here that if you want to play a striker, you play Ferran Torres, or do you go false nine, or do you back your man, Gabby Jesus? Bro, a lot of options. A lot of options indeed. Yeah, Pep's got a massive headache when it comes to this side of things. 
Um, and I, I think, I think we go false nine um, yeah. in the sense that I kind of back that we look strong. We don't naturally need to go out there and score goals. Um, straight off the bat, do you know what I mean, we already are winning, yeah. so I think the onus is pretty much on the defence to keep them out. Um, so and we, we look really good with the play of false nine. We, we've said it a few times that maybe that's our strongest eleven, the false nine at the time. Do you know what I mean at this moment in time with with, with the players who are currently in form? Yeah. Uh, but the option of having Jesus there as a striker who's not really on form at the moment, I don't think I'd go with that. But Ferran Torres is one that might twist. Do you know what I mean? He might turn me head a little bit because. Yeah. He was our leading goal scorer in the group stage for the Champions League. And he could still be massively important playing as a striker. He got the mm. one chance that fell to him against Leeds and he took it. And that's something that you can't say for a lot of our players. Yeah, so, that's true. Ferran Torres Understatement. could be the dark horse in this, where it could be that if Ferran Torres, if Ferran Torres starts when, when, when the game goes ahead, I will be buzzing because I'll be thinking, if he gets a chance, he will score it. But my brain, my, 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 my calmness is saying, do you know what I mean? False nine season. Yeah, yeah. I think we will go false nine, but I think if we do play striker, I don't think I'd be here used to play as a striker because he's just not in form. He's not got the confidence. He's hardly even in the penalty area anymore. He just, just walks about outside the box. You know what I mean? That's not <laughs> where you want a striker. Um, if we're going to play striker, I think we should play for Ferran Torres, actually. Yeah. Um, but I think that we should go false nine. Let us know what you think, actually, in the comment section below. Um, left back. Okay, another decision here. I think it's quite clear what we should do. and I think we should play Zinchenko there. Guy's been slamming. He's been putting in nine out of ten performances a lot. Um, he gives us a real nice balance on that left hand side. We see sometimes Cancelo play on that left left back position, and sometimes the balance just isn't there. I think Zinchenko's done nothing wrong this season. I thought he's been putting in some top performances. Some, you know, a couple of weeks ago before he had his little rest, he was he was slamming hard, man. He was putting in top top performances. I think he deserves the opportunity to play in this game. And I'd go Zinchenko at left-back row, I really would. Yeah, I think the Leeds game where it was massively rotated, there was very few players who could try and maybe make a case for themselves to play in this game. Mm. And he was one of them. Um, and he, he, he had a stormer against Leeds. Yes, we lost the game. However, he looked unreal. Set From set pieces, whipping the ball into the box was next level. His corners and yeah. mint. And that's something that, if we need a goal... Something that we never really get goals from corners. We could actually get one with yeah, Zinchenko yeah. taking him in. His set pieces were, in that first yeah. half, his set pieces were just, just the, some of the best I've ever seen at this football club, which, you know, granted, isn't difficult because our set pieces are trash. But they were really, really good. It gives you real nice balance. He's good on the ball. He seems pretty calm. He doesn't seem like someone who's going to start flapping. Yeah. Um, I, I like Zinchenko, man. I really, really do. I don't want to see this guy leave the football club. And I think he should be given the opportunity to, to play in this massive game. On the basis of his performances of this season, he, he was crucial in that in that, um, in that our big, long winning run that we had. He, he's been playing so well for us. I genuinely... And, and the good game that he had against Leeds, I genuinely think he deserves a spot to play against Dortmund. And especially when you look at the fact that Zinchenko is more defensive than Cancelo yeah, yeah, at yeah. left back. And so Zinchenko will sit back a bit more and that's what we need to be tight at the back. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, obviously on that note then, regarding Cancelo, switch it over to the right back situation. Who do you go at right back? The two options are, the two ways you look at this is either like this. You look at it and go, we don't lose the game and we go through. So don't concede, basically. Therefore, play Walker. Have a flat back four. Zinchenko, Diaz, Stones, Olaport, whoever, and then Walker. Real solid, tight back four. You're chilling. You don't concede a goal. At the end of the night, you're going to go through. Or do you say, play Cancelo. You know, he's not trash at defending. He's not nowhere near as good as Walker. It gives you that a little bit more going forward. But then you start to think, well, do you need that going forward if you've got Gundogan, Kevin, Foden, Mara, Sterling, whoever you're playing, you've got a lot of attacking threats. You really need that extra little bit from Cancelo. I don't know. And even if you play Cancelo, first of all, his deliveries against Leeds was trash, right? Yeah. So you're not even guaranteed right now that he's going to put some good balls in. And if he doesn't, then realistically, you completely wasted that position because Walker offers greater protection. It's a real headache again. For me, for me, I just go Walker just based on the fact that we don't need goals. We don't need to win the game. We don't need to win the game. Now, obviously, we got to go into the game looking to win, and that's maybe where you start to think of Cancelo. But we don't actually need to win the game. If we, if we draw, we get a score draw, whatever, we, we go through. So 
It's a real, real tricky one again. Let us know in the comment section below if you got anything else to add on that, bro. All I'd say is Walker's looked very, very good recently. So I do think he deserves a spot. And I think he'll, he'll do massive bits defensively. And Cancelo-wise, if you were playing Mahrez on the right-hand side, which I think we will, I think we will play Mahrez on that right wing. If Mahrez is cutting in and Cancelo is also coming in, it leaves a big gap on the right because Cancelo doesn't usually overlap. No, he doesn't. So he usually comes inside, so then you've got Mahrez cutting in as well. I guess you could ask him to overlap. However, do you want him to? Because the best we've ever seen Cancelo is when he's in the centre centre of the pitch, yeah. sort of like Hanging dictating through, play, yeah. not crossing the ball. I mean, we've seen what he did when he was... Against Leeds, he was more of a crosser. He was, he was more of like a, a typical fullback against Leeds. And it was probably one of his worst games he's ever had for us. Now, that might have just been a one-off, of course. Might be reading too much into it. But I'm just saying the best we've seen Cancelo, and you can't argue with this, is when he's in the middle of the pitch. Yeah. So it's it's a real difficult one again. To be honest, I'm not really that asked about who plays right back. I think the game isn't going to be won and lost about, uh, you know, regarding who plays who, who plays right back. So I'm not really that fussed. But let us know in the comment section below anyway. We'll see sort of, the, we'll gauge what sort of people are going for. Uh, right, okay. Team line up. Let's get it. In goal, Edison. Yeah, made a big save oh um, God, yeah. against Haaland in the first leg. Deserves to play. Again, obviously, he's not going to get dropped regardless, really. You know what I mean? But um, deserves his spot. We've gone Walker at right back. However, like I said, I'm not really that arse who plays at right back. I don't think you are either. No, no. Um, we've got to go John Stones and Diaz as the centre-back pairing. That is That has been our best centre-back pairing this season. You can't deny. And I just think... You just got to go with what's strong, and them two right now are strong. And as we've already said uh, quite a bit just before, we're going to go Zinchenko at left back. Deserves his spot for me. Yeah, deserves his spot definitely. And uh, I th not sure if it, it, I think Laporte is definitely back in training. However, he wasn't fit for the Leeds no, game. He's so, back in training. Yeah, well, he's definitely back in training. I wouldn't. I wouldn't play him. I wouldn't risk him. What's the point? No, no. Um, and then you've got we've got for Rodri at set defensive mid. Uh, there were shouts for Fernandinho in the first game, and then Fernandinho played against Leeds. I'm pretty sure. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Did Fernandinho play against? And then yeah, when we watched that game, I think in in the review of that. We kind of said he's not done enough in this game to make me want to play him in in against Dortmund. So I think we go back to Rodri as a set defensive mid. He's yeah. really good this also, season. Also, bro, again calmness. We're yeah. just looking for a guy to pass the ball around and not lose it. And of course, Fernandinho can do that. But Rodri really is the possession goat. You know what I mean? He just gets the ball. And if you you say Rodri is a ball. 50 passes, don't misplace one pass. He'll be all right just passing it left, right, forward, back. You know what I mean? He can do it. So gives you that a bit of height protection again against Haaland. I think that's the way to go, bro. Yeah, I completely agree, bro. And then we've gone for Kevin De Bruyne, obviously, um, the right centre mid. And then uh, Ilkay Gundogan as that left centre mid. Uh, KDB and Kev. Uh, KDB and Gundo even, looking good. Um, and I mm -hmm. think that is strong. That is a very strong midfield. And I think you'd, it's hard to match that midfield with any football team in Possession the world. Possession-based again as well, but we're going to keep the ball. We're going to dominate the ball. And that's what we need in this game. Keep the ball. If you have the ball, you can't concede a goal. And that's why we need to play players who don't lose the ball. And that, that, that midfield trio is class. Another player who is great at not losing the ball is Riyad Mahrez. He will not lose the ball. You know what I mean? He, he, some, some games he might not do a lot going forward because he's been man-marked by two different players, but he won't lose the ball. He'll it's always ball keep retention. the ball. Ball retention is where it's at. He will 100% play. I'd be absolutely shocked. I'd be shocked if Riyad Mahrez doesn't play. Um, we're going to go Phil Foden at left wing. Simply, Raheem Sterling just not quite on form right now. Um, and Phil Foden is. So you got to play him. And then Bernardo can play as the sort of um, the false nine. However, you will see a lot of fluidity with that side. Sometimes Kevin will go up top. Yeah. Bernardo will drop in. You sometimes see Marius come inside. Or yeah. That is a bit rarer, but you sometimes see it happen. And obviously Foden just can do what he wants. Well, I would say, bro, with that uh, Foden absolutely smashed it in the first leg and probably should have yeah, more than one goal yeah, yes. hence why he didn't celebrate his actual last minute winner there's a fact that bro he scored a goal and he, we won the game but you still you still look at it and kind of disappointed with his performance because well not his performance in his finishing because he should have had he, he probably should have had a hat trick truth be told so, yeah should have scored more um, look it's a massive game of course it Is the players have got to stay calm they've got to go into the game realising as it stands um we're going through. Now, sometimes that can be a bit of an issue because you don't know whether to stick or twist. I said it slightly before, although we don't need to win, there's no chance we're going to go into the game looking for a draw. Pep would look to win the game, um, which is why he might play Cancelo at right back for that extra sort of um, attacking ability. But there's enough there's enough talent on the pitch there to go and win the game. They didn't actually cause us that many problems. They had like two or three chances maximum against us at the Etihad, and we had... 
quite a lot of chances. We just didn't take them. We've got to yeah. take our chances. We saw what happened against PSG versus Bayern. PSG got through in the end. However, you know, they didn't take the chances and the last couple of minutes that, you know, they would have been... Could have been know, in the mud. Fearing, ...fearing for their future in the Champions League. So if we get chances, we've got to be clinical. We have to be clinical. We've said that so many times this season and sometimes it's uh, cost us so... You know, you, you've got to take your chances. Big game. Hopefully you guys can join us for the live watch along later on tonight. It's going to be the biggest game of this season. Hopefully see you there. If, you've, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that when we go live, you'll get a notification on your phone yeah. or whatever, you know what I mean? Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, uh, hit the like button. Go check out Manscaped, manscaped.com. Use code EXTRA and you'll get 20% off and you'll get free shipping. Check out the lawnmower and also the weed whacker for them nose hairs, man. You don't want you don't want them bushes in your nose and hair. It's not, it's not a good not look. Not about man. that, bro. Right, Blues, we'll see you on the other side. See you later. <laughs>